Now, Wall Street Journal reporter is set to appeal his arrest and detention by Russia's Federal Security Service on espionage charges today. Evren Gerskovich was arrested on March the 29th on spying charges that the U.S. government, many others inside and outside Russia, claim are bogus and politically motivated. We're going to talk about that in uh, Global Grid for you now. And our international affairs commentator Doug Herbert is uh, joining us here on set. Good to have you with us again, Good Doug. Morning, Doug. Um, the case here, I mean, he's the first U.S. journalist, isn't he, to be arrested on spying charges in Russia since the Cold War. Widespread international condemnation. He's due in court imminently, actually. What is the case about and what could happen today. Yeah, the, as you just said, the case is officially on espionage charges. Uh, Evan Gershkovich was an accredited uh, journalist, accredited by Russia's foreign ministry uh, for the Wall Street Journal newspaper. He was doing a story, reporting a story, um, apparently on the Wagner paramilitary group in the Ural city of Yekaterinburg when he was arrested by the FSB, the former KGB, and taken into detention uh, on March 29th. And for nearly three weeks, Russia refused to grant any uh, consular access by U.S. officials to him. That was just done in the past 24 hours. The U.S. ambassador was able to visit him in his cell. Uh, like you said, from the U.S. and the perspective of much of the international community in U.S., Europe, and other countries, uh, it's a bogus case. It's a bogus charges, politically motivated charges. Uh, as the U.S. has has classified this case, which is a rare it's he's wrongfully detained. This has nothing to do with so-called spying. What is this about? This is little more in the view of, uh, of much of the international community. This is about hostage diplomacy. This was obviously from the high ups, Evan Gershkovich's arrest. Uh, the signal came from the top. That's at least the belief. Um, and it's about also a broader uh, plan of attack right now uh, to intimidate media in, Russian, in Russia uh, and to attack Nothing short of an attack on independent journalism. As the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations uh, put it, journalism is not a crime. And what Evan Gershkovich essentially was detained for is for doing journalism, for doing his job. Russia has an extremely vast and broad, um, you know, one-size-fits-all definition for espionage. And what espionage, it doesn't have to, have to do with taking information, being a foreign agent in the country, doing... All you have to be doing is reporting, essentially, gathering information, speaking to both sides of a story, especially reporting on topics. And I want to show our viewers very quickly, you can go onto the Wall Street Journal site and they have a link to all of the, the reporting he's done. And I would recommend that Vladimir Putin and the law enforcement authorities and the FSB read Evan Gershkovich's reporting uh, before you arrest him and detain him. This is the type of stuff he's done. Maybe we could scroll through. He's written about the Kremlin's war efforts. He's written about um, cities on the front line of, uh, in Ukraine right now uh, taking the brunt of this war. Putin's war rhetoric, rallying Russian border towns, nerves fraying, Russians mourning Ukrainians killed. This was a war memorial, a war statue to a Ukrainian poet in Moscow that has been a flashpoint for the few Russians who have dared to protest by laying flowers at the site. Dozens of Russian draftees dying in a Ukrainian strike. Basically, he's been reporting on the reality of this war, a reality that most Russians never see. This is his reporting. Go on his site and read it. His reporting is the story. He is being detained and arrested on bogus charges because this type of reporting is exactly what Vladimir Putin does not want Russians to see and hear and read about. Not happening in a vacuum, this, is it, Doug? I mean, yesterday um, we had a 25-year prison sentence handed down to Vladimir Kuramurza. Yeah. Why such a harsh sentence for him? Yeah, uh, Vladimir Kuramurza is basically one of the most prominent, if not the most prominent, uh, cr critic, Kremlin critic, still left standing in Russia. What do I mean by that? He hasn't left the country. He's refused to leave. Russia's his home. He, 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 why should he leave, he says. And he has stood up to the Kremlin. He's continued to call the Kremlin out, something most Russians don't dare do in today's climate. He was twice poisoned in 2015, 2017, survived. He's a journalist. And he's an activist, a Kremlin critic. Uh, he was arrested last year, shortly after the invasion, uh, on charges of uh, basically spreading fake news about the so-called Russian special military operation. They added more charges on Russian authorities a few months later in October of last year. They added treason on to the spreading fake news charge. Treason, why? Because he was giving speeches, talks, talking to people in Europe, in the United States, about speaking out against Putin's war in Ukraine. Basically doing what Gershkovich does in his reporting, trying to get the truth out, tell the truth about his experiences. Uh, they also added another charge that he participated last summer in an in indesirable organization. Basically, 
He was being an activist. He was speaking his mind. He was doing what you cannot do in today's Russia, which is being a dissenter. I want to show people a quote. He was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Murderers don't get that much most of the time in, in, in Russia. This is worse than what murder you get for murder. Not only do I not repent any of this, I'm proud of it. I'm proud of the fact that Boris Nemtsov, you'll remember Boris Nemtsov, prominent opposition figure assassinated in 2015 right at the, the outside the Kremlin, uh, brought me into politics. I hope he isn't ashamed of me. I stand by every word I've ever uttered and by every word this court accuses me of saying. Those are brave words in today's Russia. We saw the protests at the outset of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There were hundreds of people, if not thousands, in streets of large cities. Very, very virulent, harsh crackdown. We haven't seen many protests since. You hold up a sign, a blank piece of paper, and you're basically taken into detention. Vladimir Karamorsa is the one person he continued to speak out. He's not a, do a dupe. He knew that this type of sanction could be coming, but 25 years, that is a chilling message, Stuart, by any reckoning. Uh, a shot across the bow to basically anyone who dares to criticize Russia's war or criticize the Kremlin or Putin himself. So listening to what you're saying, Doug, I mean, is there any way nowadays in Russia to express dissent? Uh, very little very little, even indirectly being associated with someone who expresses dissent. We saw, we heard recently of the case of the father of a 13-year-old school child who drew some drawings in school, anti-war drawings, you know, sympathizing with the, the Ukrainians on the receiving end of Russia's aggression. Uh, and the father was detained. He tried to flee to Belarus, but Belarus being beholden to Putin, arrested him, detained him, and he's being extradited back to Russia. Um, so you have a million of these. You have activists being rounded up. You have journalists unable to do their jobs. My sense is that a lot of Russians, from my time in Russia, a lot of Russians, and I haven't been there since the war broke out. I was there before the war broke out, but uh, the war against Ukraine. A lot of Russians are privately, most likely, appalled by this war. And they have no love lost for Vladimir Putin, but they also know what's good for them. If they want their livelihoods, their jobs, if they don't want to be denounced by their neighbors, their work colleagues, they keep their mouths shut. It's an unquantifiable number of Russians who feel this way, but I suspect it's quite big. We're just not hearing them. I'll tell you this, most Russians aren't going onto social media anymore and posting their political views, because once again, they're self-censoring. They know what's good for them. They know what's not. They know where you cross the line in today's Russia, and that is a very thin line, very easy to cross. Doug, thanks very much, Doug Herbert. Uh, I'm Shvez, commentator with today's Global Grid on France 24. Thanks, Doug.